Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and once again, no face cam this video because my sunburn is so bad uh, you will need to wear sunglasses to watch this video. But I want to catch up with you guys on the progress of the Warlord torso. Uh, so as you can see here, just from the last video, you can see that added uh, sepia waft that's been applied. I've also started painting in some of the brass details and some of the red cabling and so on. So uh, a little bit of progress here. It's quite difficult to try and film any of that because basically you have to sit with it on your lap in order to paint it. You can't sort of paint it as if you would be painting a regular miniature. But you can see that I've started to get some of that detail on here. But what I really want to cover is some of the armour panels. So what I'm using here is Tamiya's XF3 Flat Yellow. Now in just a couple of coats this can go straight over a black or very dark undercoat and give you a really, really vibrant yellow colour. So I'm just going to show you briefly here exactly what I've done so far and then we'll get on to some of the detailing on this yellow. So I'm just applying a sort of a light mist coat first using this. I have uh, thinned it down a little bit with Tamiya's uh, XF20A thinners, XA20A thinners, uh, X20A thinners, that's the stuff. Uh, only slightly though, it's probably uh, one part thinner as the two part paint, so just so it flows through the airbrush nice and smooth. So a bit of a blotchy first coat, I'm going to let that dry, I mean it does dry it very quick because it atomizes through that airbrush very quick. Uh, and then we'll just come back and show you how quickly this can uh, turn from sort of a, a blotchy yellow to a very solid colour. Uh, I really really like this stuff for going straight over black. Uh, I found Vallejo's and Games Workshop colours you have to go through a couple of intermediate stages, maybe using a light brown for example. But this stuff covers black exceptionally well and you can see there just how quickly that's beginning to lose its black and become very, very yellow. So we're just going to go through a little bit more on this. So I'm just going to apply a second coat or a, a, a mist coat and just go over that. Just that far corner for you just to see the second stage of that is completely pretty much block that in yellow very, very quickly doesn't take much of this paint to turn that black into a nice flat yellow. So I'll just speed this bit of video up just to, uh, just to save a bit of time. Uh, but you can see here I'm just going over and over and over. Uh, it's pretty, it dries exceptionally quick as I said because it's atomized through an airbrush. But you can see there if I just focus on that one corner panel and just go over that sort of two or three times in a very short amount of time that's become a very, very solid flat yellow colour. And that's that's as far as you need to go. And that is, that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to go through the rest of those panels. And then we end up with very solid yellow looking uh, paint over those black uh, base coat primers. You can see there it's still a little bit wet where I've just uh, come straight off of uh, filming, or well, straight off of airbrushing that and then running the camera so you can see exactly what's happened. But any other yellow panels that you've got, which I have a few here, uh, exactly the same technique. Now what I've done on some of the larger panels here that have got a very pronounced highlight, I've added a, a small dash of white into that yellow mix and just applied a small airbrushed highlight. Quite clearly seen on the one that looks like a Battenberg cake, the top left one, uh, and I've just added that little dash of white and, uh, and that sort of highlighted along that real sharp, it's almost 90 degree ridge line. Now to shade this we're going to use a mix of a red and brown to give a nice uh, ready brown. You can see that just as I uh, get that through the airbrush. And all I'm going to do is just feather that in to the very edges. So where the brass trim will be, or the gold trim will be, I'm just going to apply this very carefully to those edges. And it will darken them down right on those uh, right on those edges there. So it just gives it a little bit of depth and definition. But what I'll do is I'll speed up the video a little bit so that you can uh, can hack through this. But you can see exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just really targeting that, that side edge recess. Doesn't matter whether you get it onto the uh, onto the bit that will be trimmed because you'll be painting over that anyway. Um, but you just really want to focus on making sure that it it goes right to the very ends and then just sort of feathers or bleeds itself onto that yellow. And you can see there instantly that, that uh, with the highlight and the flat yellow and that shade, it looks pretty cool. So skipping forward, then I've done all of these yellow panels in exactly the same way. Uh, again, just ignoring where all the trim is going to be, all of that gold edge is going to be. doesn't really matter about that because we're going to go over it. But all I've done is just paint that flat yellow with a little bit of highlight and then just added this brown. Now for the head, I'm going to be doing a slightly mottled pattern onto the head as well. So I'm going to use the same colour, so that ready brown colour, but I've thinned it a little bit more and I'm applying far less pressure on the airbrush so it's a little bit more translucent. 
And I'm just going to apply that in a mottled pattern just over the head, just for some uh, variation on one of the key focal points of the model. A little bit difficult to see, but uh, I think you get the idea. Just sort of random patterns of that very... So it's not as dark as the shade you've applied, but it's basically the same paint mix. And just in a random pattern, uh, just to give it this sort of mottled effect. So being very careful on the trigger to not unleash all of that paint, because that will ruin the work so far. Uh, but yeah, just, just creating this slightly uh, uneven mottled pattern just on that uh, headpiece. You can kind of just about make that out now. And just skipping forward, you can see that net result. You can just about make it out over the yellow, but it's not a domineering colour as much as that shade has been. Now, if you catch up with the uh, aged gold trim effect that I've done on a previous video, I'll leave a link in the description below, uh, as well as some decals, as well as some masking effects that I've used exactly the same on the, uh, the leg sections. Again, I'll leave uh, links for that in the description below, but it's all part of the same playlist. Uh, but you can see now I've started blocking in with that brass colour all of the edge trim and as you can see there's quite a lot of it so those top two panels are, are two of the uh, the upper torso main uh, yellow ones but I've I've only taken that as far as you've seen in this video I've only just sprayed those yellow but the others I've taken a little bit further forward they actually need a little bit more work on the gold they're not quite ready yet uh, but you can see for example this weird shape one where exactly this goes this goes on the side of the uh, of the main armament and it, I've actually magnetized these but you can see there it just clips on the side uh, and there's also a couple of other bits of paneling that I've not got as far as uh, but these could just sit on top of that bellicosa cannon as well that does need uh, a bit of heat treatment as you can see it is a little bit warped where it protrudes towards the front but a lot of decals I've used the uh, Forge World Legio Astorum decal sheet as well as some of the Knight uh, decal sheets as well uh, and a few other bits and pieces that I've just found kicking around in my a big pile of uh, of transfers that come from Games Workshop. And you can see there that that's still quite glossy. So the way I apply transfers is a gloss varnish base, let that dry, then apply the decal. Uh, if you need to use Microsole or Microset uh, to uh, make those bend where needed, they didn't need it in this case because the panels are quite flat. And then once all that's dry again, it's another coat of, uh, of gloss varnish to hide all of the flash uh, edging that you get on those decals and then once all that's done which I haven't got to this stage it's then a, a coat of matte varnish just to dull that back down again and you can see there some of these are still shiny where they've still got that gloss varnish on but that's uh, that's the stage of all of this armor paneling so pretty much once I've finished that torso detailing all of these panels can then be glued onto the torso and that final one there I've just done the uh, the brass edging on that uh, on the headpiece and you can see there exactly how that fits onto the main head. But I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I shall catch you guys on the next video.